Okay, uh, so uh, trying to think about this, I wasn't going to get into a whole bunch of numbers, but if my dates are wrong, and even if my names are wrong, um, just remember Will Rogers, don't let, a good, don't let the facts get in front of a good story, okay, <laughs> on this. But I thought I would start a little bit in a context so we can understand the types of buildings and the problems that we were faced when we decided to basically pull away from uh, the Central City Development Corporation and kind of stand on our own for a while because of the fear of demolition uh, when Ernie Hahn came here. But remember, Ernie Hahn is also another father of downtown redevelopment and making it happen and taking that, that real chance uh, to do that. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to throw some things up here uh, just to give you in a context and then I'm going to do a little bit of an architect speak on it uh, because there were some, what I consider some real trigger points, some milestones uh, that was either going to make or break uh, the quarter on it. And um, when I did start my business down here, I really wasn't thinking about historic preservation. Uh, I had just come back uh, from the University of Glasgow. I got my master's in long span tension structures, working with Fry Auto in the 1970s Munich, Munich games um, and stuff. So I really wasn't focused on that. I just happened to get backed into it. And, uh, and before it was really a profession that you studied, the only place that you could really go, I'm not going to say uh, Urbana and, and, and uh, University of Illinois, but uh, uh, there was very few places that you could actually study historic preservation. And it really wasn't focused in the architectural realm at that. So, a lot of this was trial and error. Uh, some of the stuff I did in the beginning was horrible when you look at it now, but it was great back then for whatever reason. Okay. And, uh, and so, so we still keep maturing. I was just happened to look uh, at this a few years ago, and it really irritated me. Uh, not so much that it's Center City Development Corporation revitalizing downtown and stuff, uh, but this 2010 report, and as you know, of course, we do not have any uh, CCDCs anymore um, on that. And, I can, and I think Michael can probably back me up on this and Tom Hom, if we did not have CCDC, I don't think we could have made this work, quite frankly. Uh, okay, next. So, in the heart of San Diego, uh, 16 and a half blocks. The reason why you have that one block there is Alex Connell that used to run the uh, uh, Royal Pie Bakery, I think it was. And uh, he insisted that he wanted to be in the gas lamp quarter. Uh, which is cool because this is the only block in the gas tank quarter in the beginning that had the five globe lights on both sides of the street, which really confuses a lot of people, besides Fifth Avenue, of course. Next. Okay, so then it says create great public spaces. And it really irritated me. There's no great public space here that we have in, that was San Diego, so next. And then this is the major catalyst. These three developments, Horton Plaza, of course, with John Jurdy and Ernie Hahn, Petco Park, and um, the Convention Center. Um, but there's no gas lamp quarter. And that's a crime, because I think we were the greatest thing. For sure, we were the catalyst that made these guys come down here. Because, you know, they did that 90 degree switch. So, OK, next. All right, so here's the real granddad. Alonzo E. Horton, and uh, I think it's, it's interesting that in 1867, when he decided to come down here and create the new town, let's go to the next one. When he decided to come here, at the, at the end of Fifth Avenue, there's a whole bunch of different wharfs, most of them tied in with uh, the railroad at that time. As you know, the big boom that we happened in 1887 when the railroad came here, uh, and that boom didn't last very long. But at this time, you had the steam ships um, and the sail, the cargo and everything else. And I've been working with Ray Ashley. We're working on a World Heritage Site nomination dealing with 35 vessels. The Star of India is one of them uh, worldwide on it. So it's rather interesting. A, a lot of the studies that we have in these early years of tying and moving the cargo in order to make it. Next. OK, so this is sort of the street scene that we would have, oh, somewhere about 1890s. 
Now, I'm sure all of you know out there, we never had any gas lamps. <laughs> Didn't exist, okay? Uh, this was sort of an invention, I think, by Robert Hofstetter. At least he drew up some of this stuff in the early days. He was a designer uh, on it. But we had these really cool high tension lights that were up there. And it lit the street a lot better than the gas lamps. But of course, with Mount Palomar and other folks, we wouldn't be able to do that today. But I think what's important is that we had streetcars being pulled by horses at the time. And when you look at the livelihood of the, built, of the buildings here, you will find as I'm going through this, is that a lot of the buildings that were brought into San Diego were brought by design from other places. Uh, for instance, the San Diego hardware store was a building in Chicago, exactly the same shape, the size, three stories, and all of it uh, when it was brought in here. Next. We also have the Stingery District. A lot of people talk about the Stingery as though it's still existing today. And I can assure you it's not in the gas lamp quarter right now, but I think I know where it is. <laughs> um, anyway, 138 women were rounded up uh, in 1912. Most of them sent to, uh, up to Los Angeles, and a lot of them, I think, made their way back. But it's interesting that the Stingery, um, I'm not sure what, what you want to call it, the, the fact of the part that it was the Stingery and all the ladies, I think, has still grown today, and I know a lot of people really push that uh, out. So next. All right, Fifth Avenue, uh, the George Keating Building, uh, one of the coolest buildings going. Again, you can see the track lines. Um, one of the things that we find also is that a lot of the buildings in the gas uh, also have imported materials. During the turn of the century, uh, if you looked at the landscape that was here, uh, and especially even before the Panama California Exposition, it was what you would see if you drove through Camp Pendleton without the trees. And there was nothing there. Wood was a premium. Uh, this is one reason why we moved so many buildings in San Diego uh, instead of getting them. And for instance, all of the stones that are here uh, are from Ballast Point. Uh, the Ballast Point out there had these large granite stones. Some of them even had the weight chiseled into them. And they were to load primarily the clipper ships, of course, when they came in and left. So they unloaded the stones out at Ballast Point, and then when they were ready to leave, they trimmed out the ship. And if you notice all the pavers that's over at uh, in the William Heath Davis house, those were also used to line uh, all the gutters that was here. And also we had large granite pieces that were the curbs. Uh, through the gas lamp quarter. And many of those are still there now, I hope. I think they are. There's some of them there, including a lot of them that had horse rings that were drilled in and set in there so you could tie your horse up at curbside. Um, so a lot of these materials um, were actually imported. Uh, what a grand building, huh? Next. By the way, go back one more. You're going to see a, a later one where this is all painted white the whole thing. It's, uh, it's hard to believe people do that. Next. All right, and Spreckles, besides doing the, uh, his streetcar system, uh, especially in 1886 and then coming back to electric, also then would run and do other projects uh, to, to tie all the streetcars together, like the roller coaster out in Mission Beach. Now, the interesting point is that when we finally moved into the upstairs of the San Diego hardware, there were these long benches along the wall. And we found out that that was a dance floor. And when you look at the way that they put the oak floor in, the oak floor wasn't straight. It was in a kind of a square pattern, so that as you were moving around, you were all, always going with the flow of the wood. So in case it came up, you weren't going to trip. And we kind of asked ourselves that, and so we started to remodel. And we found an incredible amount of oriental fans. I don't know whether they're Japanese or Chinese. Uh, I think we still have them today. They're gorgeous. And, uh, so, and when, but we found a lot of tickets. And a lot of tickets were tickets to get out to not only Mission Beach, but part of the other land areas that Spreckles was selling at that time. So it was a real great network that we had at that time. And during the early years, next, we were also thinking about putting the streetcar through. In fact, the Ga Gaslamp Gazette, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, 
uh, with Jerry Lebonnicki was really pushing to get the streetcars back. And we actually did some investigation, found the rails were still underneath the street. Although probably not usable, but still underneath the street. Okay, so until this time, we really didn't have very many people uh, that were in, uh, in San Diego. Until we had the uh, 1915 Panama, California Exposition. What happened, let's go to the next slide. What this promoted was the first time, and thank you so much for this slide, David. This is, this is one of the coolest slides. Is with the opening of the Panama Canal and tying the nations together. And I'm not going to go through that whole story because you all know it. But it had a major impact on what we know now as, as the gas lamp, gas lamp quarter. Next. And we then started to import a whole bunch of architects and a whole bunch of architecture that we had. Now, what does that building remind you of? U.S. Grant. US Grant. Okay. So, same architect, but when he decided to build the U.S. Grant, when he was asked by Spreckles to come next, there you go. So, I think it's kind of unique that all these buildings now were kind of focusing on where we were going next, especially with the Panama, California Exposition because of the, of the folks coming in. You'll notice the streetcars are now electrified and going, and of course our favorite little uh, uh, Horton Plaza. <clears throat> Not the Horton Plaza. Next. Okay, so we were about ready to change our image. And the image that we're changing to uh, prior to the exposition was to come back and do either mission revival or Spanish colonial revival. Uh, it was important that we sort of captured this phase as the architecture by Goodhue was going. So even though we had our great Victorian station that at this time I believe was only about um, 17 years old, we decided to tear it down because that was not the image that we wanted to have visitors coming to San Diego. We wanted to capture the very romantic period um, of the Spanish colonial revival and the, and the mission revival. So, as we were preparing for our California Exposition, this is a film in 1912. And you'll notice when you start looking that this building is under construction. All you see is the concrete walls and the hollow clay tile infill. This is the, the Watts building. You'll notice that it's still got scaffolding and X bracing and stuff in it. So everybody was then very strongly prepared because Fifth Avenue was going to be the major corridor at that time going up to the park. Uh, it also had the streetcars that were electrified and loading through. Now, one of the problems that we ran into at that time, though, was that the southern portion, and if you look at the Callan Hotel, uh, for instance, if you go out here and you just walk down the block, you'll see some Chinese characters underneath the Callan Hotel. Uh, this was probably the most diverse neighborhood that we had. Uh, besides a lot of uh, Asian, Pacific Islanders, uh, we also had um, a lot of uh, African American groups, I mean, when you really look at a lot of the pictures in, in Mike's book that he put together on the gas lamp quarter, you'll notice how diverse it was. While there's a lot of folks that felt that that wasn't such a great deal, is to go through the southern portion from the wharfs coming up until you got up to this area. And a lot of people were relocated. And in fact, I remember when I was first starting the office, I was still in Marilyn Marx's building, I was wondering to know why, as a large city on the Pacific Rim, that we don't have a major Chinatown, major Japantown, Koreatown, or anything that really has any resemblance of that. And I'm going to embarrass Tom pretty soon here. But, um, but anyway, I think, I think it's interesting that all of this building in 1912 was on the expectation of the Panama, California um, Exposition. Next.